Hey, what is up everybody? This is Flash 001 USA. Today is Tuesday, November 3rd, Election Day. The year is 2020 and it's around 9.30 p.m. All right, I've been talking about this in a couple of the past radio videos I've done, but today is the day. And what we're gonna do is take a look at this ground plane antenna. It's made by Serio. It's the Tornado 27. It's a 5 8 wave ground plane antenna, and I'm just going to let you guys see that it is still fresh and tasty in the box. Now this is the backup antenna. I've already got this model up on my pole right now outside, so when we finish in here, I'm going to go outside and we're going to put an antenna analyzer on the antenna, and we're going to look at the real world specs on it compared to what they say on the sheet. Also, um, I'm going to point out a couple pros and cons of my personal opinion with this antenna along with some enforcements that I did to it and I'll get into that in a little bit more detail. So take a standby and I'm going to pull everything out of the box and spread it across the bench so that everybody can see it. Take a standby. Alright, the first thing I want to do is a flyover and let everybody look at everything here and then we'll start covering this piece by piece. I think this is the best way to do it. This way you can kind of get a good look at everything here. Alright, let's go ahead and start with the base of the antenna. and This is the heart of it. Let you get a look at it. And I'm going to start giving you some of my opinions and feedback on it. Okay, now one thing I do want to point out right off the bat is this guy right here. Now on a standard pole that you'd put an antenna on, or most mass poles at the very top like this right here, that's one and a quarter inch diameter. This however is one and a half inch diameter and they do offer, I don't know what you want to call it, I don't like it, but they do offer this right here so that you can mount it to the side of a pole and I didn't like that so what I did on the top of my pole I've got a shim that goes inside of this thing and then I actually drilled two holes in it and physically mounted it up to the top of my pole this way I know it's not going anywhere and it's centered which made it easier when I was raising up my push pole alright so now we got that out of the way as far as the construction of it, there's parts of it I like, parts of it that um, raised a little bit of red flags, but like I said, I did do some enforcements on it, and I think it paid off. I'm going to turn the bench light on here. Hopefully that'll help some. There we go. All right. So looking at the bottom piece, you see we got the place for the coax connector. And it doesn't cost them a lot to make this antenna. That whoever came up with this design was pretty crafty. They were pretty smart. And they used the bare minimum of materials and still came off with what I consider to be a decent antenna. So you can see how they did this. The RF connectors here, of course, is grounded here. And um, where the radials come off for the ground planes is where this is mounted and then feeding the RF up which I really like this they got a solid piece of steel and it mounts to the coil right here and on top of this thing they've got a hex screw in there so that it holds everything tightly in place this is aluminum and then it swirls and goes back to another connector that's the same way and you can see where they did this you can see where they cut it off right here on the machine once they made their coil and of course another hex screw and everything's held in place like that now the antenna it's not like a Mako for those of you that are familiar with Mako antennas you know that you've got the ring on the bottom of it the ring goes to ground and then it goes to the antenna itself 
and on that ring you slide your wire back and forth on it to match your impedance to get it to tune in. And one good thing about an antenna like that is it's DC grounded. That helps with static buildup and whatnot. Now this isn't. So basically what you have is an antenna that's the RF connector hooks right in. It goes to the loading coil and hooks directly to the radiator part of this. So just to be aware of that. And there's a plastic insulator. Now I know one of the cons is with people living in high wind areas over time these have been known to snap. I can get that. I can understand that. Supposedly they've made some improvements on that to beef it up and hopefully that'll take care of the problem. And I'm going to show you something else here also if I can do this without breaking my ass. I don't have a lot of height in this building here but if you notice, you can see all the way through it, and there's a reason they did that. That's because when the antenna is put together, they wanted to make sure that any water that maybe seeps down into the couplings where everything's put together, it always has a way to escape and drain out. So that's a good thing right there. So they at least thought about that, and that's a big plus. So we got this out of the way. And I'm going to come back to this in a minute, but I'm going to go over, just brush over the whole antenna. Now this thing is, I think, six pieces. And that's not including this. So you have six of these sections here that go together. Now out of this, one, two, three, four, five, five of these, yeah. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> okay, five of these are set at predetermined heights. So in other words, there's no tuning. You just put it, physically put it together. And the way they did it is they pre-drilled everything, which is great. They got holes pre-drilled on everything in here to make your life easier. They give you the little packet of screws, and they give you these little washers in here also. And basically with these washers, you can see my thumb pointing at it right here, on the plastic cover pieces that go over each section of the antenna, you put a screw in a washer. Now where the metal is on metal, you just put a screw in there and you're done with it. So what they did is they simplified this to make it very easy for somebody to put together. Trust me, I can appreciate that. Then at the top part of this is where you do your tuning, right here. So this section here, which just slides in there, you go ahead and you adjust it and on the piece of paper here that they give you, they actually give you a chart to tell you the height of everything of that of the this piece here. It's probably easier if I show it to you just like this. Okay. So this is the antenna. All this is preset with the exception of this piece up here. And they explain to you on a chart here, they got a tuning table. Everything's a metric, but that's not a problem. You know, we're in the 21st century, so you can either do it on your phone if you don't know it, or however you need to do it, but you just come up with the height that you need to do it. It'll give you a very good approximation of where you need to put it for wherever you're going to run it. And um, I'll get into more of that as the video moves forward. So for now, we're going to set that there. But yeah, pretty simple and straightforward. So that's the pros of it. And then we move on. To our reflectors here, there's four of them, and these pieces here that I'm holding will actually go in here, and I'm just going to do this so you can see it on the camera if I cannot kill myself and stab myself with these things. So it goes in like this right here, just like that, ta-da, and then they give you a hex screw that goes on the bottom, and that's going to be one of the weak links in this that I'm going to cover and what you need to do to make sure you don't get caught with pieces of your antenna falling out of the sky. I actually experienced that. I'm not joking. I experienced that with the first one I put up. Luckily, I didn't have it all the way raised up because I would have been pissed if that would have happened. So that's basically that. And then these pieces here will slide in to the piece that I just had up here. And basically what they did is they got this piece on here with a hex screw on it. You slide it in there and they even tell you the lengths that these have to be. So just follow the directions. 
Okay, let's look at the downfalls and the way to fix it. It looks like these, I'm assuming this is stainless steel here. I'm going to zoom in on this. This is a stainless steel piece that's probably press fitted onto this aluminum. Then you got the hex screws, so once you put the tip of the antenna in, you just tune it and lock it down. They did the same thing with these. And that's where I got bit from, was that. I'll explain that in a few minutes. And the same thing with the hex screws down here. So, when you're putting these ground planes together, and you know, you slide this piece into here. You see what I'm doing here? This piece goes in there and slides in. And you lock it down. Not only are you going to be using Loctite on that, but here's where I had a problem. I had mine Loctited in, and the damn press piece, pressed on piece here, fell off. I had one of these just fall out of the sky while I was sitting there working on it, and um, I, was like, I was like, you gotta be kidding me. So I pulled the antenna back down and took this off. What I did was, once I had the antenna back down, I pressed it back on, but I put a drop of super glue in there and just shoved it on it, and it still had total connection, continuity, so I wasn't worried about it. But, once you put your stuff together and you lock tight of here, um, use quality electrical tape and go around it on this thin piece at least an inch above it cover all the way over it go back onto the other side of it over here other words put you a good layer of electrical tape across it and be you know do the job neat so that it what what will happen is it'll wind up making sure that nothing can fall off quality electrical tape will last years and years and years in the sun and I can personally attest to that. Also, once I finished with the tape, I took a dab of super glue and I rubbed it on the tape to make sure that it basically melted into itself and it wasn't going to come apart. Now, as far as these guys here go, be sure to tighten them up good into there. You want it to pinch into the metal, but don't do it so tight that it strips. Once you put that in there, you should be good. Um, if I have my druthers, I probably would have went to the hardware store and got me some longer screws and I would have taken them to the grinder and put a tip on them, a pointy tip, and just screwed them in like that, also using Loctite. And that way it would have pinched into the aluminum a little bit more and I definitely wouldn't have the issues of a fear of it coming out up here. But I did have, at the ends of these things, and I'll try to shoot it with the camera if I can get enough zoom on my ground planes on the intent of the sub. And you can actually see where I taped it. That same concept applies to here. Once you tune your antenna and you know that it's where you want it, put tape on it here. Also, these pieces here, the plastic pieces, they give you, let me see, um, five of these pieces here. And I think this is self-explanatory. It's even got the hole right here where the screw goes through. It slides on here like this on each piece. What I, would, what I did was instead of taking this and pushing it down here, I take it to the pole, slide it on the pole, and slide it up some, you know, a good ways up, because you want to be able to align the screws up first. And once I slid this piece in so that all of the screw holes like this are lined up, I took a little bit of RTV rubber cement and just gently with my finger went around the groove of it and then while this is on the pole, I slid it down into place and locked it down. Now, like they, like I said, they do compensate for water. So even if you don't do that, if, if a little water over time or humidity seeps in here, it will run down the center and it will drip out through the center of the antenna. So it's not like you're going to be having to deal with something frozen and broken. Alrighty, now that we got this out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and we'll look at the antenna. And hopefully I'll be able to zoom in with the camera. You can see where I actually got in here and made the reinforcements on it. And then we're going to take a look at the sweep of the antenna. So what we're going to look at is probably a 1 megahertz bandwidth on the antenna. And we'll look at the standing wave across the 1 megahertz bandwidth. And we're going to compare that to their chart that's in this piece of paper here. And spoiler alert, I already did... 
already went out there, you know, when I was putting it up, already looked at it. And, hey, it's pretty close to what they say that it's supposed to be. So in the real world, it's actually, you know, what they, what they got printed here is actually realistic. So take a stand by and we'll take it to the next step. Okay, now we're going to take a look at the reinforcements that I did with the tape on the ground planes. Um, but to do that, I need to go ahead and put this on the tripod for stability so you can see it because I'm going to really have to zoom in on it. We'll be right back. Okay, hopefully this will stay focused in because I'm trying to focus in on something, I don't know, that's what, 100 feet away from me, about the diameter of a pencil. But if you look at this, you can see where I've got the tape that's overlapping the inner and the outer section of the reflector. So this is what I was talking about, about reinforcing it. This way it's not going to fall off on you. And also, as I mentioned, absolutely use Loctite on all of the pieces on the antenna. So you can see what I've done here. And as mentioned, I went an inch above on the smaller radial and crossed over it an inch on the other side to the larger one where it's mounted into. Now, I've also got some footage of this antenna under high winds with the last storm that we had coming in here. And I got a bunch of footage of that, so I'll take some cuts out of that. And you can see how this antenna performs under heavy winds. Now, I don't think it would last under hurricane winds or anything above 70 miles an hour or something with continuous winds like that. And most antennas wouldn't especially when you got something that's like this, it's extremely tall. But overall, like I said, I think it'll do just fine. And if you do have a sudden storm or something, it'll probably survive that without any issues. As long as you got it put together correctly and you know you did your reinforcements on it, you should be fine. going to move on to sweeping this antenna so that's where we're going to go next take a standby okay here we are at the antenna and i'm going to sweep this at a one megahertz bandwidth and then i'm going to pull up a program on the analyzer 
and we'll look at the SWR across that one megahertz bandwidth. So here we go. First thing we want to do is do an actual sweep. And I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see this. That's what our sweep curve looks like. And my center frequency is 27.185. Let me zoom in a little further here. It's hard to see this camera out here in the sun, but I think this is captured. Okay. Now, let's take a look. As soon as I get the ants and spiders off of me. <laughs> let's take a look at uh, the frequencies and their standard wave across this band right here. All righty then. So, I'm going to zoom in here. Really, that's not bad. Now, to me, this antenna, um, as far as using it without an antenna tuner, I'm going to say um, a little bit less than one megahertz that you have on it. I would say, um, I don't know, you know, damn close to it without having to put a tuner on it, but, you know, not quite one megahertz wide. And if you got an antenna tuner on it, you can squeeze a lot more out of it than that, but... Just wanted you guys to see the numbers for yourself. Now, I'm not going to pull up the reactants or anything like that on here. We're just looking at the basic information. This is a basic antenna, and this should be able to answer just some simple questions about it. Now, eventually, I'm going to be doing a, another video out here, and it's going to be covering this guy right here. Now you probably wonder what this is. Okay, this is something that I built... A while back and it allows me to run two antennas off of one coax and the beauty of it is I switch it in this box electronically so um, the coax coming from the house I've got a box built in there that throws a 12 volt DC source up here and it switches this relay inside here and up on this antenna which I've always ran this for a long time for many years I've got a random wire, long wire antenna. Actually, it's about four wavelengths. And we're going to get into some detail on this, but not on this video. I just want to intrigue everybody. But this wire, it runs way the hell over here, all the way to the woods. And I've got a pulley system set up on the tree, so if the wind blows, that it doesn't stress the antenna. The wind can blow all it wants, and there's a pulley set up with counterweights that allows this thing to breathe and flex without stressing my long wire. So on that note, oh, very techno technical right here. Oh yeah, that keeps it dry. On that note, I wanna show you one more thing here. We're gonna take a quick look at a homemade test jig that I made for working on and tuning antennas with. This one's still up since I just recently replaced my antenna. This thing is really useful for ground plane antennas and that's why I wanna share it with everybody. Okay, guys, the camp wanted in the movie, and I couldn't do anything about it. All right, on a serious note, if you do decide to build up a test fixture for your antenna, um, I'm going to bring something to your attention. Be sure to use at least 50 foot of coax cable when you go to tune the antenna. If you raise this thing up and then try to stand underneath it with a 10 or 12 foot section of coax, you'll think it's tuning, but by the time you get the wire hooked to it and you got the length hooked to it, you're going to realize very quickly that your center frequency where you tuned it will shift. And by the time you get past 40 or 50 feet of coax, what you'll realize that as long as your antenna is tuned here correctly and whatever you raise it up on, as long as you're not near a structure that's going to have an adverse effect on it, the tuning will stay pretty true on it. So I wanted to bring that to everybody's attention. Okay, what I want to do now is compare the real-world analyzer readings against the manufacturer specs on paper. And I can already tell you, it's pretty darn close. Before we do that, I want to show you guys something here. As mentioned in some previous videos, I had to pull my iMax down because it had a lot of age on it and it just it started going haywire on me. But here's the iMax. 
If you notice, it's been disassembled. I disassembled it without breaking anything on it. I got all the guts out of it exactly the way that we're put inside of this thing. And I plan on doing one hell of a video on this antenna. I'm going to let everybody get a real look inside this thing. I know that years ago there was a website up called IMAX 2000 Exposed. Well, this is going to be that, but on steroids. I think you'll be surprised what you find inside of this antenna, and we're going to cover it in detail as soon as I get a chance to do the video. Also, let's talk pros and cons again here. With the Tornado antenna I've got up now, it's a great antenna. It works really good, and I'm happy with it. Um, one of the pros, it's pretty light. It was simple to put together, very easy to tune, and very easy to raise up on a push pole. This thing here is a little bit heavier, actually quite a bit more heavier, and it's hard to push up on a push pole, especially doing it by yourself. Now, with that said, I want to talk about bandwidths. This IMAX is literally twice the bandwidth of that tornado. I'm not making it up. The only reason I pulled this down was because over time it started failing, and actually the, the center frequency on it where I had it tuned, it actually went up to 28.5. It started doing some crazy things. I pulled it down. I checked everything. I cleaned everything. And um, the rings were adjusted correctly, but it just started going haywire, so that's why I pulled it down. But even then, this thing was still usable in the 11 meter band. But I had this thing set up originally with the rings tuned pretty low on it, and I had it resonating, um, I want to say uh, 27.25, 27.3, I don't know. It was very much in the 11 meter band, and I'm here to tell you I had a 1 megahertz bandwidth on this thing either direction you went. I'm talking from 26 to 28 megahertz. You had like a 1.2, 1.3 worst case on this thing. It's a great antenna. So I wanted to point that out that this is a broadbanded antenna, extremely broadbanded compared to the Tornado. So that's the only thing I'll miss about this antenna, but um, the workaround is get an antenna tuner. Okay, let's go inside and we're going to go ahead and take a look at the measurements on the analyzer and compare them to the paper. Let's take a standby. Let's compare real world measurements taken off of this antenna with a quality analyzer against the factory specs. And the first thing I want to do is look at the sheet that came with the antenna. So let me zoom in. Boom. The only thing I'm concerned about here are the following. I want to see the bandwidth they tested the antenna at along with the resonant frequency in that bandwidth. So we know, looking at this, if I get my eyes to focus, okay, 1.3 megahertz bandwidth. I tested at a 1 megahertz bandwidth. And their resonant frequency was at 27 megahertz, and they had approximately, give or take some, an SWR of 1.2. Now they also have a little chart. It's not on this piece of paper, I don't know why, but it's on a PDF file. So let's look at their chart here for this antenna. Okay, if you notice, I drew a line here and here, and that's approximately 1.5 as far as the standard wave goes, and you can see where the crossovers are. So it's 26.2 all the way to 27.8 megahertz, with 27 being center frequency. And if you look at this, just in your head calculate, hey, um, where the frequencies are, where they land around 1.5 on the standard wave, and look at this. Ta-da! Man, that's pretty darn close. I want you to look at this. Keep in mind, you don't know how they tested this at the factory. You don't know what kind of coax to use, how much in length of coax. So, to have it this close tells you, hey, they were reasonably honest about what they put out there. Trust me, I've seen Nintendo manufacturers that just fed you a load of bull crap. So you can see it, um, the center frequency for me, which was the center of 11 meter band, around 1.34 compared to their 1.2. That's real world, I can buy that. And at the lowest end of the band was around 1.8 for standard wave, and at the upper end of it, 1.9. Man, it doesn't get any better than that. And you can see everything in between it right here. That's one thing I love about a quality analyzer. And that rig expert, man, I got to tip the fedora to whoever designed that thing. 
That's just incredible for working on antennas with. So once again, you see the chart. You can see the lines that I drew in between everything that represents around 1.5 on the standard wave. And of course, their center point here, their resonant frequency for their test. And once again, look at the numbers. Yeah, man. Pretty cool. I hope this helped everybody. You know, like I said, if you're thinking about buying this antenna, yeah, it's a good investment. Just be sure to go back and make sure that you do some reinforcements on it, like I was showing you. If you do that, you'll get a lot of use out of this antenna. Like I said earlier in the video, or at least I think I did, that, um, yeah, I was impressed with the antenna when I got it. I wish it would have the bandwidth, you know, I wish it, I'd give anything if it had the bandwidth that the IMAX had, but hey, if wishes were horses, you guys fill in that line. But I was impressed with it enough that I've got a backup antenna right here should a bad storm or the Jolly Green Giant come walk into my yard or, you know, anything that's that would uh, wind up tearing the antenna up to the point where I couldn't repair it. Flash 001USA. For all you radio nuts out there and radio fanatics, give me some feedback. 